what I like best about the Terry and Jesse show is that it revives my hope in men to be godly men. It's a really good show because it's relatable to family life, daily life. It's encouraging. It's like cheerleading also for Catholics. But number one, the reason I like it, because you guys aren't afraid to speak the truth. You are both the most compassionate hosts I've ever heard. And as a Jewish convert, I am a much better informed Catholic. Thank you, Terry and Jesse. I just think it's the best thing that we have here in L.A. It's awesome. I'm hooked. Boy, oh boy, do we have a show for you today. Welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. We're two evangelical Catholics that love the Lord Jesus Christ, devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary, love Holy Mother the Church. We're talking about uh, issues that affect our culture. We've got PhDs in common sense. This is uh, where Catholicism and culture intersect, and we try to speak the truth in charity. Let me just remind you of a few things before we go on to a very exciting show we have today. I'm going to be interviewing in about two minutes... Zachary King, who was a former uh, former Satanist for 26 years. Did you catch that? Is this a microphone on? I'm going to be interviewing a former Satanist who is now a fired up, hard charging Catholic. Zachary King was a former Satanist for 27 years. We're going to be uh, going to his interview in about two minutes. I just would like to mention that uh, got a Holy Land trip coming November 14th to the 23rd. I'm going to the Holy Land with Steve and Janet Ray, myself and my wife. So if you want to go and hang out in the Holy Land with myself, my wife, Steve Ray and Janet Ray, the best tour guides in the world on the, on the Holy Land, go to footprintsofgod.com, footprintsofgod.com. Let's go to Israel with a Bible in one hand, with a rosary in another hand, with Jesus in our heart, and let's pray and study as pilgrims the land where it all happened. I also want to mention that if... Uh, We got two free, uh, a couple of CD giveaways today that go along with the interview. We have a DVD called What Every Catholic Needs to Know About Hell. Another DVD giveaway, Interview with an Exorcist. Another uh, CD giveaway. They're all free CD giveaways. All you do is pay the shipping. It's former Satanist comes home to the Catholic Church. That's Deborah Lipsky. And we also have former Satanist becomes Catholic, Betty Brennan. Uh, You can get those free CDs or DVDs. All you do is pay the shipping. Call up 877-526-2151-877-526-2151. Let me tell you about Zachary King. Zachary King, this is a modern story of divine mercy, of the way God's divine mercy touched a former Satanist. Zachary King was just an average boy in in an average American neighborhood. And Zachary actually grew up in a Baptist home. And he began practicing magic at about the age of 10 years old. He joined a satanic coven at 13 years old. And he basically says that he broke all the Ten Commandments by the time he was 15. From his teen years to adulthood, to, to his adulthood, he worked his way up to high wizard in the coven, the satanic coven. And he actively pushed Satan's agenda, including ritualistic abortions and breaking up churches. But then, in January 2008, I'm going to let him tell you of what happened in January 2008. But the long and the short of it, after 26 years of involvement with the occult, Zachary has become a new man, a new creation, a warrior for Jesus Christ, a faithful son of Mary. Zachary, his uh, his testimony is powerful. I heard it a couple of weeks ago over in Oakland at a Divine Mercy conference. He's an inspiration. And his life demonstrates how great God's mercy and forgiveness truly are no matter what we've done. Zachary lives today in Florida with his wife, and he's now speaking all over the country, spreading the story of his miraculous rescue from Satanism. And if he can be rescued, anybody can. He's working on two books at the present moment. I can't wait till they come out. His, the book that he's working on, the title is Satan Loves Me, He Loves Me Not. And the second book that he's almost completed is called Abortion as a Satanic Sacrifice. Zachary, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. Thank you, Jesse. It's a wonderful pleasure to be here. Zachary, I met you a few weeks ago, and I was impressed. I met you and your wife, and I can see that you are totally, totally in, as they say in, in uh, you know, in the in the world of sports. Are you in or you're out? And I can tell you that you and your wife are totally in for Team Jesus, Zachary. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the religious tradition that you were raised in, and how long were you a Satanist? Uh, I was raised as a Baptist, 
and I was in the Baptist church from the time I was in diapers. And um, I grew up Baptist, and I started um, magic when I was about 10 years old and uh, started playing um, a game in the bathroom called I Hate You, Bloody Mary, which is really a spell, and playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons, usually in a, a magical capacity in that as well. Um, I got involved in a satanic coven when I was 12 that also believed magic was real and all this stuff, but I didn't know they were a satanic coven. I officially joined them when I was 13, and I was involved in that till I was 33. I came out, and at that time, I, was, I, I broke up a lot of churches, and I was in one of those churches. I, I broke up Baptist churches, and I kind of filtered myself into that Baptist church, claiming that, you know, oh, yes, I was converting and all of that, but I really just wanted a change of scenery from where I was. And I lasted at that a little over two years and decided this really wasn't where I wanted to hide. I really wanted to do my magic and stuff, and I went back to that. So I did it for like another um, right, six or seven years. And uh, so my total time in, because it's like broken up, I basically started when I was 10 and came out when I was 40. Zach, what, and there's like, um, can you give us the definition for the audience, for lay people here? What is a Satanist and how did you get caught up or how did you get recruited into Satanism? So number one, what is a Satanist? And then how do you get caught up or recruited into Satanism? Well, Satan, a Satanist is, uh, on, on the one hand, is kind of hard to define, and it's also kind of easy, because I belong to organized Satanism, which is like uh, an actual, like a church, you know, where, where, and you have an agenda, like the agenda is to move Satan's agenda forward and God's agenda back. Um, there's also un unorganized Satanism, and, and as, like, in a, a Satanist could be atheistic or theistic, so the, the Satanists may not actually believe that there's a devil or a god, and that's more really of a hedonist, but they take the Satanist uh, title. And then there's the theistic Satanist, which was what I had been. And you believe in God and you believe in the devil. You just have a different view of both than what's portrayed in the Bible. And, you know, it, it's uh, a Satanist is somebody that turns their will over to the devil. But not everybody that does that knows they've done it exactly because new age people are worshiping the devil, but don't know it. You know, they, they have a, a skewed view in, in uh, you know, a religion is new age. If it removes God, the devil, heaven or hell. So like Jehovah's witnesses don't have hell in their religion. Mm. You know, Buddhists, there's four different types of Buddhists, but in many of the Buddhist cultures, they've taken out all four. And that means that there's 1 billion Satanists that call themselves Buddhists. Zach, how did you get recruited? You know, how did you get recruited into Satanism? Um, well, mine started, unfortunately, Satan goes for those of us that are broken. And if he can possibly break us first, um, I was a victim of a sexual assault when I was 11 in um, the school bathroom. And uh, it turned out that the woman that assaulted me was a part of the female of the satanic coven I was in later. Um, so at first I was broken with the, the sexual assault. When I was 12, I found, and magic is what gave me solace and comfort, but I was doing magic on my own. And I played D and D every weekend. We did campaigns and that, uh, this particular weekend, somebody said, Hey, there's this group that also believes in magic and believe it's real and they do D and D. Why don't you hook up with them? So I basically got recruited through that. And I was like this little nerdy geeky kid, you know, and they, you know, like Star Wars and Star Trek and pinball machines and video games at the time was like Atari, but, you know, they had all these machines and stuff at their house, and it was just a fun place to be. You know, it, it's not a fun place. You shouldn't. No, no one should take advantage of these things, but, you know, I I didn't know any better. So you were recruited by an adult Satanist. Uh, you, were, you were introduced into some of these. Uh, can you tell the audience what D&D &D is? I know what it is, Dungeons and Dragons. Can you give us a quick definition of that? And how dangerous that can be? D&D um, &D is a role-playing game. And when you're a kid, you, you want to be your character. You want to be, if you decide you're going to be a, a thief or a fairy or a wizard, as in my case, you want to dress as your character. You want to be your character. You totally become that character. And it's played on, I mean, it doesn't have to be on a, like now they're played like as a board game, but it's really a role-playing game. So you, 
you roll dice to see you come up with a campaign, you're going to go somewhere, you're going to rescue somebody, steal some gold or whatever. And it, the campaign takes however long it takes. You have a dungeon master that controls the outcome of a lot of things. And you roll dice to see if you really get to accomplish these different things along the way. I was always a wizard or a sorcerer, so I did magic. And when the game first came out, like it came out in the early 70s, they used real magic spells in it. Like they went to Satanists and witches and said, hey, we want our game to be as accurate as possible. Can you give us real magic spells? And, you know, Satanist is like, sure, here, take, take all of these. So, like, when I was doing death spells in the game, they were real death spells. Wow. Zach, let me, uh, we're going to be going to a quick break right now, but just uh, be prepared to answer this question uh, when we come back from the break. Uh, just hang on. I want you to tell the audience as a Satanist, what did you think about Christianity? Specifically, what did you think about the Catholic religion when you were a Satanist? Uh, and uh, just hold on to your thought right now because we're going to go to a quick break. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. I've got a brother in Christ here. His name's Zachary King, but he was a former Satanist for 26 years. He's sharing his story from Satanism to Catholicism after a 27 year journey. If uh, we've got a couple of free CD giveaways, uh, what every Catholic needs to know about hell, interview with an exorcist. You can call up 877-526-2151. Just pay the shipping. Those are free DVD giveaways. Also, CD, former Satanist, comes home to the Catholic Church, Deborah Lipsky and Betty Brennan. You can call up 877-526-2151. We'll be right back. Don't change that dial. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. We have an incredible interview right now. I'm talking with Zachary King. He's a former Satanist. He was a Satanist for 26 years. He was steeped in Satanism. He's now a catholic christian warrior before we continue with the interview i just want to mention that we're in the month of june in the month of june i want to remind all the listeners that this month is dedicated to the sacred heart of jesus in 1693 saint sister margaret mary alacoque she had the first of four visions of jesus with his heart exposed burning with love for his people and so it's a good idea as catholic christians to consecrate yourself and your family to the Sacred Heart of Jesus this month and place or hang an image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus in your home. And this indicates and reminds us that Jesus Christ is indeed the King and the Lord of our homes and our lives. Also want to mention that if you'd like to invite me to your parish, just go to jesseromero.com, jesseromero.com. If you'd like to invite me to your parish to do a parish mission, I've also got a book called uh, Catholics Wake Up, Catholics Wake Up. It's uh, You can order uh, the book by going to my website, jesseromero.com. It has evangelization stories of how I used to evangelize people when I was a street cop and when I was, all, I was also a fighter in, uh, in, in boxing and kickboxing gyms, the way I used to take my faith into the gym and into a black and white. We continue. We've got, we've got a Zachary King. Zach, I've got the question that, that I just left you with before the break. What did you, when you were a Satanist, what did you think about Christianity specifically? What did you think about the Catholic religion? Well, the uh, Christianity itself I thought was kind of a joke. It was like no church that, you know, like I broke up 120 churches and none of them seemed holy. You know, like they were, um, I used gossip as was like the basic way to, to infiltrate them and, and make them split. And, you know, obviously if something as simple as gossip can make you split, how unified are you as a church? And uh, so going through, I mean, there was like, there was no Protestant religion, like organized Satanism attacks two churches. Now they may attack less now because, you know, when, when we attacked the Baptists, they were kind of powerful, you know, that they, they worked hard against Satanism, but since then they've kind of um, like, they were against the homosexual agenda. Well, now they're kind of, you know, in favor of it. They're, they don't fight against it like they used to. They used to be against abortion. No, not so much. Now they, they kind of accept it. So it seems like Satan has done his job there. Um, the other church that he, fought, that he battles is the Catholic Church, and that's probably been an ongoing battle since, you know, when, when the Catholic Church started. Um, my, but my, my thoughts about the Catholic Church when I was a Satanist was that I had had one encounter with the Catholic Church when I was eight years old. Uh, and this was, unfortunately, this was my view of the Catholic Church. I um, I used to, 
I get a ride to school every day and my dad, and then I'd walk home. And every day I would pass this Catholic church, not know what it was. And walking home, a lot of times I would see these people dressed weird outside, like just wearing like strange Halloween costumes, but not knowing that these are priests and nuns. I just, you know, I grew up Baptist, so everybody wears a suit. And um, walking past this group one day, and there was this nun out there, and she just looked like love. She was like radiated love. And I ran up to give her a hug. She knelt down. She hugged me. It was the longest hug of my life. And then I noticed that my friends were way off in the distance. I let go, and I ran past, you know, and ran to catch up to them. The next day, my dad was giving me a ride to school, and we passed this building again. And I was like, Dad, what is that building? You know, and he was like, ah, it's the Catholics. I don't, I, I, the sign says Catholic church, but I don't know what that is. So I was like, what's a Catholic? It, is, it doesn't matter. They're all going to hell. So as a Satanist, I believe that I was going to hell along with all my Satanist friends. But I also believe that all the Catholics were going to hell as well. And all the Protestants were most likely going to hell because I just, there didn't seem to be one religion and there didn't seem to be the right religion it didn't seem to be there but it, by that same token it also struck me as strange the two churches that we attacked like it seemed like if we're attacking them there has to be a reason for that zach let me jump in here so how 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 did you find your way then into the catholic church from satanism what was the the point of departure from satanism to catholicism and then a second question I want to ask you, do Satanists, when you were a Satanist, is there kind of is there some study program kind of like some kind of RCIA like we have in, in the Catholic churches? Is, is there some type of satanic catechesis? So the first question, what was your point of departure from Satanism to Catholicism? And as a Satanist, did you actually study some doctrine? Well, the um the how my, my point of departure was I was a manager in a mall at a, a store, a, a piercing pagoda. And this woman came up and um, I had done a spell the night before. And this woman had came up and was going to buy some gold hoop earrings, um, ended up being delayed in her purchase, came back and uh, we did the transaction. And she said, Oh, I have something for you. Would you take it? You know, and I was thinking, okay, it's a Jack chick pamphlet and I'm going to hate my life after this. And I was going to swear that I would read it, but I was just going to throw it in the trash. And she pulled out this little gold disc. You know, I was thinking, oh, that's different. No one's ever given me something like that before. And um, she tells me that it's powerful and that it can do all these things and just how amazing it is. You know, and I'm thinking, oh, you know, Christians don't bless anything, so she's got to represent some cult. And she says, um, the Blessed Mother is calling you into her army. And I grew up Baptist, so Mary gave birth to Jesus. That's the only story I got. I'm thinking Blessed Mother, Isis, Gaia, Aphrodite, something like that. So she represents some female deity cult. And I'm uninterested. I just came from, you know, like one of the biggest cults in the world. I'm interested in your little tiny cult. And she tells me again that it's powerful. And this is like a kick to the ego for me because it's like, oh, you're telling me this is powerful? I'm going to take this and tell you it's worthless. And um, you guys are really getting the, uh, the the long and the short of this all at once. It's like this is the reader di- Reader's Digest condensed version. Yeah, by the way, Zach, um, where can people get... Where can people get the long version of your story? What's your website before you continue? What's your website? It is uh, allsaintsministry.org. And what uh, do you have your story, the unedited version, on CD and DVD? I do. I have, um, I have a version that's more of a teen talk that we gave in France last year. Um, that's the Adoratio 2014 disc. And then I have a more um, adult version that I definitely would not give to children unless they're not homeschooled. <laughs> if they're not innocent, go ahead. But uh, it's a little more adult themed. How can they get? And, how can uh, people? How that, can people get hold of these CDs? And by the way, how can people invite you to their parish or to their conference to give a presentation on this? Um, again, go to the website. My email address is there. My phone number is there. Uh, they can call me or email me. Um, you know, we, we have a, a form that goes out if somebody is interested in booking us, and it's all the requirements of what it takes to get us there. And um, if we go to, like I said, last year we were in France. Uh, this year, next Thursday, we're going to Ireland. You know, we're going to be there for two weeks. And, um, you know, I travel the United States. You know, it's a, it's a very fun gig that God has given me. 
<laughs> so tell us, how did you find your way back into the Catholic Church? Uh, somebody gave you a little silver disc. What was that silver disc? A, a little, she gave me a, a little gold disc. It was a uh, miraculous medal. Okay. But I didn't know. I had no idea what it was. And I put my hand out, and she dropped this little thing in my, my hand, and I clenched my fist around it. And I, I'm going to tell her that this is a worthless thing that can do nothing to me. And um, I wrap my fist around it, and suddenly I'm, like, transported. I'm, like, in this blackened void, and it's me and this woman talking, and my mall and my store are gone. And I am scared. <laughs> scared doesn't even begin to tell you how scared I am. I am beyond terrified. And this woman starts telling me about the magic spell I did the night before that my wife didn't even know I did, and all the magic I've been doing, and that I'm working for the devil, and that I need to turn my back on the devil and turn and face God. And I had done the impossible. I thought I had sold my soul when I was 13, which is impossible to do, but I thought I had done it. And so I thought this was impossible, that I could never go to God, because that document I signed said that. And in the middle of this blackened area with this woman, the Blessed Mother appears to me. And she takes me by the hand, and she turns me around. And her son is standing behind me. And for me, it was instant. Like, to me, I was no longer a Satanist. I no longer practiced magic. I no longer did drugs. I no longer had an immoral lifestyle. Instantly, I knew that I was Catholic. Zach, you said something very interesting right now. You said that you signed a form when you were young as a Satanist that you gave your soul to the devil. What, what type of form is that that some Satanists sign? Um, you sell your soul. You, you think you're selling your soul. You um, sign this document that says that the blood of Jesus washes away all sin, but not yours. Jesus died for everybody, but not you. Um, you can never seek out God. Even if you wanted to, you can't go to God because your soul now belongs to the devil forever. There's no way you can get it back. So it's a blasphemous document that they have Satanists sign uh, to try to confuse them, obviously, and try to separate them from God forever, at least in this lifetime, right? Right. Now, the, 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 what you can give to the devil is your will. But one act of contrition, you know, one, you know, one going to confession, you know, and you, that you, now your will goes, to, goes back to God. That's right. You know, Satan has nothing. Satan will continue to lie to you because that's what he does. He's a liar. And he's a great deceiver. But, you know, it, it's not true. Absolutely. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. We've got Zachary King. He's a former Satanist. He's now a hard-charging Catholic. Him and his wife. He's got an apostolate called AllSaintsMinistry.org. And he's sharing his, his journey of faith. This is just a redacted form. You can get the full story by going to his website at AllSaintsMinistry.org. But he's sharing his journey of faith from Satanism to the Catholic faith. By the way, we do have free CD giveaways here that are correlated to this story. We've got a DVD. It's called What Every Catholic Needs to Know About Hell. Another free DVD that we're giving away. It's called Interview with an Exorcist. All you got to do is call up 877-526-2151. 877-526-2151. You can get those DVDs for free. Just pray the shipping. Or you can get the CDs. Former Satanist comes of the Catholic Church. One is Deborah Lipsky. We've interviewed her before. The other one is Betty Brennan. We've interviewed her before. We've got their conversion stories from Satanism to Catholicism. Those are free CD giveaways. Just pay the shipping. Call up 877-526-2151. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. We're interviewing Zachary King. We'll be right back. Don't change that dial. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. We're interviewing Zachary King. He's a former Satanist. He was part of that cult for 26 years. He's now a Catholic Christian. He's sharing his journey of faith. You're not going to get the whole thing. You're going to have to go to his website if you really want to get the unedited version. It's at allsaintsministry.org. I do want to mention this, that for those people that may question the existence of hell, the Holy Bible mentions hell by name 54 different verses. Hell is mentioned 54 times and let's not forget that St. Faustina, in 1931, in her diary, the diary of St. Faustina, she says that in hell, there are seven different torture chambers. She, she saw hell. She witnessed hell firsthand, and she was called the Secretary of God. She wrote about it and warned us. And the Bible also tells us very clearly that uh, Jesus Christ, his own words, uh, he talks about the devil. 
Jesus Christ tells us that the devil is a liar and a murderer from the very beginning in John chapter 8, verse 44. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the highest authority, has told us about this, the existence of this nefarious evil entity. We're talking to Zachary King. We got a phone call. So, uh, Jose from California wants to ask Zach a question. Go ahead, Jose. You're on the Terry and Jesse show. Hello, guys. Uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord, Jose. Uh, my question is, um, I have uh, my fiancé's sister. Every time I go uh, visit my fiancé, uh, her sister is watching this show. It's called Charmed, and it's like a 90s um um, show, and uh, when uh, when I started paying attention to it, it has a lot of um, there's like this group of, of three girls that um, they pri- they do a lot of witchcraft, they do a lot of spells, and they're like sort of like witches that are against these sort of demons. And basically, my question is that. Um, I I recall you um, that the the dungeon game uh, you know the dungeon the dragons you guys were saying were talking about that it contains uh, real spells so I was wondering if you guys were familiar with the show and if it contained uh, um, you know real spells in it and also what can I say to my uh, fiance sister so I can uh, you know. Uh, that would help her um, in any way. Jose, good question, Zach. Uh, so the 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 long and the short of it, can are there some bad programming out there that uh, has a, a satanic uh, you know underpinnings, and can people actually cast spells through television by through these mediums? Go ahead, Zach. Um, a lot of the spells, a lot of the stuff that happens on those shows is just made up, but. Um, to make a spell real, to make a spell work, you need uh, repetition, um, intention, and a, a, a demonic presence. So it's like the, the kids that have tried Harry Potter spells that say, I've tried these over and over again and they don't work. Well, that's like praise God because that meant a demon wasn't present. But then I've also talked to kids that tried them and they did work. You know, and it's like, okay, so, you know, you've got, but seven or eight books out and the movies and they're showing over and over again. So you have a repetition. You have kids that want these spells to work and they keep saying them. So there's intention. All you need is that one last ingredient to have a working spell. Um, you know, and, and I mean, Satan didn't fall off the turnip truck yesterday. He, this is a long thought out process of trying to get magic and to get evil things put on TV and put in mainstream so that we accept them so that we don't think they're bad. You know, it's like they, they, they make, you know, obviously the three girls are pretty and all the stuff they do well, they fight evil, you know, so they're fighting demons. So they're doing good work, you know, and you know, it's like Buffy, the vampire slayer was like a similar thing. There were the bad guys were, were ugly and hideous and the good guys were all attractive and it was vampires going up against demons. You know, and it's just, it's Satan infiltrating, just trying to make it so that we accept things. I mean, recently, you know, there there were two black masses that were held. One didn't quite get to be held because people protested, but the other one was held. And 10 years ago, we couldn't have had this. You know, this this would not have stayed, you know, and we wouldn't have stood for it. But now it's acceptable. Jose, so I guess what Zach is basically saying, absolutely, there's an infiltration of Satanism even in the media. Jose, we got other phone calls. Uh, thank you very much, and I hope you uh, keep on listening. Thanks very, very much for your phone call. We've got Jesse calling from Marietta, California. Go ahead, Jesse. You're on with Zach and uh, you're on with Zach and Jess. Go ahead, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Zach. Hello. Hey. Yeah. Uh, Welcome. My question. Hi. Uh, my question is, well, long story short. I'm from a Sunday of God, and listening to the show, I've really become, I would say, Catholic lately, and I'm so confused right now. And also, this this other day, I was at at the Sunday of God, at, you know, my church, and or should I say, my maybe 
you know, soon to be ex churches. And I was sitting in the back of the pulpit and the pastor was talking about how Catholics were so wrong about different things. Right. And something in me just kind of like, I don't know, like it's hard to describe it, but the point is that the pastor was talking about that, you know, that the, the, the Catholic church is a church of Satan. And, um, something happened where the pastor started saying that there was like an evil spirit in the room. And uh, I just kind of like, just felt like weird, you know, because I mean, there was people talking, uh, speaking in tongues. And after that, I felt something so incredibly weird that I felt like I was having like this panic attack. Like I couldn't reason. I felt like my, my, like I had like a, a million worms crawling around my head. And I remember I ran out of there and then I started praying and I started asking Mother Mary, you know, saying, help Mary, Mary, help me. I don't know how this is, how Catholic to do it, but help me. And that calmed me down. And I just don't know what to do now. It's like, I feel like I should join the Catholic Church. I, I don't know if this is a sign. I mean, I, what do you guys think about this? What's your guys' opinion about this? Zach, go ahead. Um, I was thinking that uh, RCIA sounds like a good idea at this point. <laughs> um, should uh, pray and discern, but, you know, it's when when Jesus handed the keys of the church to our Pope, our first Pope, there was no other religious faith really there. You could be Jewish, or you could be pagan, or you could be Catholic. You know, there wasn't 40,000 Protestant denominations. That's right. You know, for, for, for myself, you know, the day Satan really started laughing was the day he convinced Martin Luther to uh, break up our church. You know, and it's like all of them claim that they all have the Holy Spirit and they're all spoken to by the Holy Spirit and they all put out the truth. But there can only be one truth. And if you count the Catholic Church, there's four, there's 41, you know, there's 40,001 churches. They couldn't all have the truth. I would go with the one that Jesus started himself. Just let me just jump in. Uh... I'd like to continue this conversation with you, Jesse. I think the Lord is calling you to the fullness of truth. Uh, go to my website, jesseramiro.com, and give me a call. I want to talk to you, and I want to just, uh, we, I need to talk one on one with you. Without a doubt, the Holy Spirit is leading you into the fullness of truth. I also want to say this is, isn't it kind of interesting, Jesse? And I think Zach could comment on this. I live a stone's throw away from Hollywood. Every time a Hollywood diabolical blockbuster comes out, you know, The Omen, The Exorcist, The Amityville Horror, you know, The Right, uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, ex- all these d- diabolical blockbusters. Notice that Hollywood, although Hollywood does not like the Catholic Church, they're an- they have an anti-Catholic bias. You will see that Hollywood is accurate historically because they always depict the Catholic Church as the only church to be able to fight Satan and demons and demonic possession because Hollywood knows which church has the keys and which church was started by which church was started by Jesus Christ in 33 AD. So uh you can also see that historical accuracy from Hollywood. Zach, would you uh uh would you like to comment on that? Uh, I agree with everything you just said. Jesse, thank you very much. That's absolutely the truth. Jess, thanks very much for calling up, and I'll keep on staying, uh, keep, uh, uh, stay plugged into Catholic Radio. Go to my website. Go to my uh, email, jesseromero.com. Okay. Give me a call. I want to talk to you. We want to, I need, want, want to continue this conversation. I, I would, yes, I would love to keep continuing to talk with this and also about possibly joining the Catholic Church because I really feel like this is the only place that I can find answers about this. And this is, this is something that I just never experienced in my life. This is something that I just felt like I was losing my mind that day. And, you know, my... It's like my friends there, they just don't understand that. Yeah. And it's like something that I feel like, now I feel like I'm like being harassed because I'm, I'm listening to Catholic stuff and <laughs> Catholic, you know, this and that from you guys from the show. And it's just, this is just like, uh, I kind of feel like overwhelmed now, but I don't know what to do, but I kind of feel like listening to you guys' the show, I feel like I'm, I'm, I have backup now. Jesse, let me pray for you real quick. Okay, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy yes. Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, and through the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, I just ask you to bring, bring peace to Jesse from Murrieta. Bring peace to his heart, his mind, and his soul. Give him peace, and just lead him into the fullness of truth. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thanks, Jesse, for calling amen. up. Thank you, brother. Thank you, God bless. God bless Thank- you. Zach, got a question for you. Uh, 
your your uh, healing and deliverance from Satanism or from satanic oppression or obsession, was it gradual or was it sudden? It was instant. Wow. Instant. It was. I was given the miraculous medal. You know, the Blessed Mother, who I did not know. I mean, when she said Mother of God the first time, I had no idea. Well, she said the Blessed Mother, and I had no idea who that was. And when she said it the second time, I knew that that was the Mother of God. And being a Baptist, we would have never said Mother of God. <laughs> and and there she is. And she turns me, and, and there's Jesus. And it was funny, at, at one of my talks... Zach, we're, 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 we got to go to a quick break. Uh, hang on the line. Okay. We're going to continue the next segment. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. We're talking to a former Satanist, Zachary King. Uh, his conversion from Satanism to Catholicism. Don't change that dial. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. This is the Lord's Gym. We are your spiritual fitness trainers. We got PhDs in common sense. Our free DVD giveaways and CD giveaways, we're giving away what every Catholic needs to know about hell. Also, interview with an exorcist. Those are free DVD giveaways that really just segue with the show today, with the interview that we're doing today. You can call up our product line, 877-526-2151, 877-526-2151 for those free DVD giveaways. You just pay a little on the shipping. Also, we got two CDs that we're giving away on today's program. Former Satanist comes back to the Catholic Church, Deborah Lipsky, and former Satanist becomes Catholic, Betty Brennan. We've also interviewed them. We've got their conversion stories. You can call up our product line, 877-526-2151. Also, I'm going to the Holy Land with Steve Ray, November 14th to the 23rd. I'd love to have you come along and hang out with me and Steve Ray and our wives as we travel the Holy Land with our Bible in our hand, our rosary in our pocket, and Jesus in our heart. If you want information to the Holy Land trip to the pilgrimage, go to footprintsofgod.com, footprintsofgod.com. Dot com. I also want to mention if you want to invite me to your if you want to invite me to your uh, event, just go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, go to my website jesseromero.com, jesseromero.com, and uh, you can invite me to your parish. And also uh, on our, our the giveaways, if you go to our calendar catholicrc.org, that's our calendar for our our giveaways. Go to catholicrc.org for our giveaways. I also got a book. It's called Catholics Wake Up. I have a chapter there on how to fight the devil in the book Catholics Wake Up. It's called Renewing Your Mind. Everything, when it comes to spiritual warfare, it starts between the ears. It starts in the mind. You've got to renew your mind in Christ. So I got an entire chapter on how to fight against evil spirits. It's called Renewing Your Mind. It's in my book, Catholics Wake Up. You can get it by going to my website, jesseromero.com. jesseromero.com. We're talking to Zachary King. Zachary, got a question for you. Uh... So your healing and deliverance, you said it was it was sudden through basically the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let me get, ask you a question. So can you give us your your spiritual fitness plan right now on how you stay delivered and set free from demonic uh, you know oppression or obsession or physical torment or demonic bouts? How do you, Zachary King, stay set free right now and walking in liberty as a child of God? Well, it's the same uh, same plan that I give everybody else for protection against the devil. You have to stay in a state of grace. you got to do what, whatever it takes for you to be in that state of grace. That's what you've got to do. Now, for me, that means I have to go to confession every seven days. Some people aren't as sinful as me and more power to them, you know, but everybody could use a blessing. They at least go every seven days and get a blessing. Um, say your rosary at least once a day. I do... I. You know, as, as you know, I'm blind. So I do, um, I say that I have 20, 20 spiritual vision. I do 20 rosaries a day and I do 20 rounds of Schottky prayers a day. And that keeps me focused and, and very sharp as far as the devil goes, as far as not falling into the pitfalls and traps. Um, but, you know, confession, the Eucharist, you know, if you can take the, the, the Eucharist daily, that's an amazing gift, you know going to finding a, a perpetual adoration chapel, you know, the, the devil's not going to sit in front of Jesus. So, you know, you want to be devil free, sit in front of, of Jesus, but do it in an adoration chapel because in a church, you know, yes, Jesus is there, but anybody could bring the devil in with him. You know, everybody's got free will. Hmm. So, 
he's, he's not really going to be, though, in the Adoration Chapel. So you want to be at Adoration, say your rosary, um, daily prayers, daily Bible readings. You, you can't, you know, there's so much substance in the Bible. You know, it's like you, you can't get away from that. That's like your meat and potatoes. Um, you know, and everything else works out. I mean, you, you have the armor of God. You know, the, the problem that a lot of people get is that putting on a piece of armor attracts demons and the devil to you. It's like they see you're ready for a higher form of battle. So they come in and they nail you one. And a lot of people do the wrong thing. They think, oh, I should take this piece of armor off and get out of the battle. And they take that off and the devil doesn't attack them again because, well, they're no threat now. But, you know, it's like the closer you are to God, the more Satan hates you, the more he'll try to attack you. But the more pieces of armor you have on, the better you can stand against him. And when you've got your full set of armor on and you've got your shield and your sword, chase him down. He's scared of you. He doesn't want to face you. He wants to attack you from behind. Get your full armor, turn around, run after him. Zach, uh, would you say that in being a, a Satanist for 26 years, would you say that there was a point in time or maybe moments when you were totally possessed? Yes. Um, as a Satanist, as far, as, especially as one that practices magic, you know that if a demon is possessing you, that your magic is more powerful. Now, that's kind of a, uh, it's, it's such a ludicrous statement because um, you yourself are not powerful. You're just given an illusion of power. You, you think you can do everything. You think you can, you can walk on water. I've raised the dead and I've killed people through magic, uh, and I've walked on water. And none of those things are me. I've also levitated. None of those are me. That's a demon lifting me up, a demon holding me on water, a, 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 you know. And But I think it's me. So I think I'm all-powerful, and everybody watching me thinks I'm all-powerful. Everybody wants to be me. Everybody wants to do what I can do. And I'm not doing anything. You know, I'm just being lied to. I'm just... I'm thinking I'm in control and I'm really, I've got puppet strings on me and Satan's played me. Zach, Zach, did you ever undergo maybe voluntarily an exorcism maybe after that you would join the Catholic church or a deliverance session uh, or a healing of memories? When, um, when I first came into the church, my first spiritual director was father Anthony Gramwick. And he told me that I needed at least a deliverance and possibly an exorcism. And I took that back to, um, the, the priest that got me into the Catholic Church was Monsignor Lavalle up in Winooski, Vermont. And he looked at me and he said, well, he goes, you spend 18 hours a day in front of the Blessed Sacrament. I don't think you're possessed, he goes, but I'll, I'll give you a deliverance. So I got a deliverance from him. That was six years ago. Um, I have a lot of friends around the world that are exorcists and that are deliverance priests. So whenever I'm in the company of any of them, I always get prayers from them. So I, I stay constantly, you know, we travel almost year round. So we stay constantly with priests and we get prayed over quite often. Zach, when is your book going to come out? People are going to be in pins and needles to hear your story and tell us how people, <laughs> tell us how people can get a hold of you, your website and how they can get a hold of the unedited version of Zachary King's testimony from from uh, the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of Christ? Um, AllSaintsMinistry.org is our website. Uh, my email address is there. I, I have a Facebook. I have Twitter. Although, don't follow me on Twitter because I'm the most unpopular. I never post anything on Twitter. Um, my phone number is there. Uh, my CD is um, Putting on the Armor of God, and that's an unedited, um, really hardcore version of you're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. We just lost Zach uh, for a couple of seconds. Zachary King is a former Satanist who converted to the Catholic faith. And uh, I've talked to him personally. He's given us the, the shortened version. But uh, we will have him back. And uh, he's a blessing to the church. Zachary King is a perfect example of the way the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of his spirit, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, can change a person from darkness to light instantly. This man was healed fully and completely through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary by receiving a miraculous medal. And obviously the Blessed Virgin Mary brought him uh, un under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. 
You're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. Zach, are you there? Yes. We lost you for a second. Zach, uh, any parting shots? You got about 30 seconds. What you like to leave the audience with? Don't be scared of the devil. Don't fall victim to his stupidity, his silliness. You know, as Catholics, we have all the sacraments. We have what it takes to stay free, what it takes to not fall into his ensnarement, you know, what it takes to stay close to God. You know, we know what all those things are. We know sacramentals. We know holy oil, salt, water, um, miraculous medal, St. Benedict medal, confession, uh, going before the Eucharist, taking the Eucharist. You know, stay Catholic. Stay as close as you can to God, and you'll stay away from satanic experiment. Zach, uh, hear the music. Thank you very much. We're going to have to do this again, my friend. And... Uh, you, uh, you're, you're, in my, you're in my prayers. You're doing good work out there. You're exposing the kingdom of darkness. You're doing with very few. Pe- you're treading where very few people want to tread. God bless you and your wife, and we'll stay in touch. Thank you. You've been listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. You've been listening to a conversion story of a Satanist. 26 years of Satanist Zachary King converted to the Catholic faith. As Catholics, well, what can I tell you? We've got to trust the Lord. Trust in God. we got to pray the rosary. This is a great time to be a Catholic Christian. We know that we're on the winning side. God is not dead. Heck, God's not even tired. And the Lord has a plan and a purpose for your life. We're called to be this a lighthouse amidst the gathering storm. Be not afraid. We serve a mighty king. We thank you for listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. My partner Terry is out in some meetings with Lighthouse Media. He'll be back tomorrow. But uh, we'll see you same Christ time, same Christ channel. Keep the faith.